last week has been a uh, momentous week in the global economy as the last month has been a momentous month. Um, if you're following the news, you know that the Vice President Joe Biden just came back from China uh, and he has been begging the Chinese essentially to put up resources to invest in America. Now the interesting thing about that is that the Chinese have been begging the United States to allow them to invest resources in America for probably the last five or six years. And as somebody who thinks a lot about China, it's my background, and I, I, as a scholar, that's all that I've been focused on, I've been very interested in that particular issue because I think it has huge consequences for the global economy today, and I think it has huge consequences for the U.S. economy specifically. Going back a little bit further, we have to also contextualize that in the last five or six years, or maybe last decade, of what's been going on in the U.S. economy, but also what's been going on in U.S.-China relations specifically. Uh, but even that type of historical context is perhaps not enough, and maybe we even need to go deeper. The reason I raise these issues to you right now, or just want to put them on the surface, is because I'm very much a student of thinking about where we are in the global economy and then putting that in historical context and then thinking about how that historical context is about the moving of institutions across the world and the moving of nation states across the world and then thinking about the role that business schools can play within that context. Now that brings me here and that brings me to you and to a partnership with you. So what I want to do for my short time here in welcoming you to this school is to talk a little bit about the historical context of business schools, what role we're playing and what role we plan to play in the global economy, and also exhort you to step in and play a role that we hope you will play. And so let me just step back a little bit and kind of give you some of that context, both the historical context of where business schools are and where we believe our particular business school is going and our particular partnership with you uh, is going. So the first thing is that I think it's very interesting to note that business schools, in my mind, have in some sense, uh, during the 1970s, 80s, maybe even the 1990s, we lost our way a little bit. It's a very important concept to think about the role of business in a capitalist society. I often think that there are three key pillars of institutional structures that drive a capitalist society. Those are governments, nonprofit organizations, but most importantly business. Make no mistake about it, business is the key force that drives capitalist societies and probably democratic societies. And so how do we actually think about our role in that process and our role as educators in that process and your role as people going out into the world with that education, to me, is crucial. So if we go back to what I like to think of as the beginning of this transformation, I like to think of September 13, 1970 as the moment, in some sense, that changed the world in very specific ways. And the reason I like that date is because that was the moment when Milton Friedman went from being a mathematically oriented crackpot economist of the University of Chicago to being a public figure and ultimately on his path to being a heavy influencer of economic systems. If you don't know that name, you should know it because Milton Friedman is the most important economist of the 20th century. He changed the world in terms of thinking about how economic systems run. Now, the important thing about that is that neoclassical economic theory and ushered in an era of shareholder capitalism. It allowed us to think that the only thing that matters in businesses and in corporations is shareholders. Now that was an important thing for the drive of the U.S. economy in the 1980s. And of course, companies like GE became very powerful under that thing and popularized notions of this became very uh, much embedded in the social consciousness through movies like Wall Street and the fictional character, character Gordon Gecko. But it was actually a very deeply held belief for many years, not just in the American popular consciousness, but also in business schools, that shareholder value is all that matters. That there are major things happening in the global economy and in the U.S. economy 
that had an important sway for what we were doing and where we would end up 30 years later. One was globalization and the trends that were happening in the 1980s and 1990s about how seriously we need to take the U.S. economy and how seriously we need to take our relationship with other nations. The second issue was the issue of the question of how responsible we are for what we do in short-term versus long-term economic value. And that would, issue would come home to roost in the accounting crises of 2000, 2001. And there were some of us in business schools that started to wonder, were we responsible for not giving the students good enough training that we'd go out and be a part of the Enrons and WorldComs and Typos of the world? And we wondered about that. But we kind of continued along our way. And then we thought about this again in 2008 when the world suffered the biggest economic crisis that it's had since the Great Depression. And now is a very, very interesting moment for the business community in general, but for business school institutions specifically. What are we doing to train the future leaders of the world? What are we doing actually to think deeply about the role of business in society and how responsibly we actually deliver the future leaders and the education that we're giving to them in this context. And so I have always had a dream about building a business school that is the most forward-thinking business school in these contexts. How do we think deeply about the global economy? And it's an important thing to understand today. We can sit back on our hands in the United States and believe that we're still the biggest economy and the greatest nation on earth. And that may be true right now, but if you go down to Brazil, Brazil doesn't think about the United States anymore. Brazil thinks about China. They think that we're backward thinking in terms of what our understanding of globalization is. And when Joe Biden is in China and begging the Chinese to invest, companies like Huawei and Hire are saying, we've been trying. It's the problem of the political system in the United States that isn't solving this issue. So we need business leaders that are going to stand up and say, how do we understand the complexity of the global economy? And how do we understand the future of this world? But we also can't just do this in the global context and thinking about shareholder value. We have to do it in a responsible way that has ethics and values and social responsibility at its core. So I always dreamed of being in a business school and part of a business school that was fundamentally about that. And luckily, I got to inherit a business school that has been thinking about those issues for as long as I have. There was a very, very significant revision of this curriculum that happened in 2008, before I was even a part of this, that actually transformed this business school to become a real thought leader in the issues of ethics and social responsibility and sustainability uh, and globalization. And so it's a wonderful thing to be thinking about us in this moment. This moment, to me, is the moment that we can all step up and say, how are we going to be thought leader in this world, and how are we going to be training the future leaders of the global economy to be thinking deeply about these issues? Now, of course, there'd be no place in the world that would be better to do this in than in Washington, D.C. Last night, I joined many of you for, for uh, uh, cocktails and hors d'oeuvres, uh, and we're supposed to be looking out over the Washington Monument. Of course, the, the, the rain clouds interceding, but the point is we are right in the middle of this discussion. We are right here influencing this debate. And so I would just exhort all of you to think deeply about this moment. This moment for all of you is a time when you've taken a step back and there are opportunity costs to that from your careers, uh, but you are engaging in a conversation that is going to help you be the business leaders of the future, and it's also going to help us as an institution be the institution that becomes a thought leader of that moment. And I, I just think it's, to me, it's, it's a scary moment that we live in, but it's also an incredibly exciting moment because we can help recreate this system. Uh, and so please, please uh, engage in your education and take this moment on. Don't just think about this as a moment of credentialing, but think about this as a moment in which you are going to seize the opportunity to help us change the world. And that is our goal here, and I hope that you all are very uh, engaged in it and excited about it. Now, as a dean, it's, it's a great thing for me to be a part of an institution uh, that is really engaged in this, but 
I inherited an institution that was already long uh, thinking about these issues. And so, make no mistake about it, your professors, people like Tim Ford, uh, Anna Lusardi, uh, Marat Tarimjilar, um, all of these people have been thinking for a long time about these issues, and you have access to them. And so, build your networks here now amongst yourselves, but also build your networks with your with your the people who are teaching you, and really take the, seize the opportunity uh, to engage in this. Um, now, as somebody who actually inherited this process, like I, I actually uh, am very much thankful to, and in some ways even. Uh, subservient to all of the people who delivered on these things for a long time. We have all of the staff who have long been, been serving the students, uh, and it's important to think about them and recognize them. But the most important person to me in, in, in my uh, kind of co-authorship of this moment is my partner in crime and friend, Marat Trimsula, who was an architect of a lot of these changes long before I came. Um, so I want to turn the stage over to him. Um, and I want to also just welcome you and thank you for being here as a part of this moment. So without further ado.